how you can identify trend reversals using Bollinger Bands and Fibonacci retracements. Before I pull up the chart using the Bollinger Bands, I wanna go over the basic settings I use. First off, I use a three standard deviation, 20 period. I have it calculate on each tick. I also don't use the middle Bollinger Band because I don't need it for determining trend reversals. Now that you know what settings I'm using on the Bollinger Bands, for these examples, I'm gonna be using an E-mini S&P 500 60 minute chart. Now, I like to use the 60 minute chart for identifying trend reversals because it fits within my time frame for trading. I am an intraday to multi-day swing trader, so the 60 minute chart is really that sweet spot for me and my trading. Now, I said in the beginning, I'm going to be using two tools, the Bollinger Bands and also a Fibonacci retracement. So what am I looking for to identify a trend reversal? First things first, when a market is making a sharp move in any one direction and the mouth of the Bollinger Bands are opening up, to me that represents a powerful move in that direction. So that is setting the tone for the trend. So on my time frame, this move lower here is telling me that the trend is down because the Bollinger Bands are expanding outside of the previous Bollinger Band peaks and the market's going in one direction with the mouth of that Bollinger Band open. Now, how do I know when that trend may reverse. Once the Bollinger Bands start to come back in and the market starts to consolidate, and you can see those Bollinger Bands are pointing in, I take a Fibonacci retracement tool and I draw it from the bottom peak to the top peak or the top peak to the bottom peak. And I only use the 50% line. Very similar in how you use a regular Fib if you are drawing it from the price high to the price low, that 50% level represents halfway back and if it gets above that, if you're looking at it from price high to price low, that represents that maybe that low is in and we're reversing. Well, I take it to another level. And I use the Bollinger Bands as my gauge for this because the Bollinger Bands to me represent a range of volatility. So instead of looking at price high to price low, I look at peak Bollinger Band high to peak Bollinger Band low. Now, once we get above that 50% line. That indicates to me that we are no longer able to stay in that bottom 50% of the volatility. So it represents to me that the trend is now reversing. And as you can see here on this E-mini S&P 60 minute chart, once we establish price action above that 50% line, the market started to move higher. Now on this chart, all I did was move everything over and take you to where we broke out. This is where that 50% line was on the previous example. Then we broke out and as you can see on my time frame, the trend is now up. So you can see that the Bollinger Bands opened up. We held above that previous 50% and then we formed new peaks and the market started to consolidate. What I want to talk about here in this example is when I start to see a trend consolidate and stall. So I think that the market is going to be in a two-way trade. So first thing I look at is the same scenario as before. Peaks start to come in, draw a fib from the peak high of the Bollinger Band to the bottom. You have your 50% line. And one thing I look at is, as you can see here, it actually held above the 50%. And then it started just to chop around it here below it, above it, below it, above it. When it comes to any strategy you are using, it comes down to how the market is respecting that price. Because that 50% line means something to me, the market is telling me we don't respect that price. So it's giving me a look to say, Anthony, this market is probably just going to be range bound. We're in a two-way trade. We cannot hold above 50% to confirm the trend's going to keep going higher we cannot hold below 50% to confirm that the trade has reversed and starts to go lower. Because as important as it is to identify when a trend is reversed, it's just as important to know when we are possibly consolidating. So I use that same tool that I did for identifying a trend reversal to know when we are potentially consolidating. So far I've talked about when I identify a trend will reverse, when a trend will possibly stall and consolidate, now I wanna show you an example of when I see the trend continuing. And what you look here is the same thing I've talked about in the previous examples. 
Bollinger Bands opened up on a sharp move lower. They start to come back in. You draw the Fibonacci retracement tool. You have your 50% level. And as you can see here, the market consolidated and it could never get to the 50% and it just starts to drift lower. So one thing that I look for is when those Bollinger Bands start to expand beyond the previous peaks, it resets. And so now I'm looking for a new peak to draw my Fibonacci retracements. And in the meantime, because the market is just grinding lower here and the Bollinger Bands are expanding outside this previous peak, it just tells me, look at only the short side because the trend is going to continue. The final example I wanna show you is a mistake I see a lot of traders make when using this type of tool for determining trend reversal or continuation or consolidation. The most important thing to do when you're drawing your FIB is stay within that Bollinger Band. I showed you examples where the mouth of the Bollinger Band opened up and then it came in and I had my FIB tools drawn from the bottom peak to the top peak. I see a lot of traders when they start to apply this style to identifying trends, they take it from one peak here to a peak down there and you have all these Bollinger Bands in the middle. That to me and my homework is not a good way for identifying trend reversals. Always remember to stay within the Bollinger Band peaks. Those are the ones you use the Fibonacci retracement tool to identify trend reversals. Each and every week on Develop Your Edge, you see me use the NinjaTrader platform for my charting examples. Well, for the month of June, NinjaTrader is offering $100 off their lifetime license. To learn more, go to ninjatrader.com. One of my favorite tweets from last week that I retweeted was from my friend and guest on Features Radio Show, Jared Tendler. He put this out. Winning mental battles takes a toll. Yes, it can build confidence, give you inspiration and hope for the future, but it also can be draining. Don't underestimate the need to recover after days where you make solid progress or you'll take unnecessary steps backward. I'm gonna use my personal experience with this tweet. I really love this tweet. Recently for me, you guys know that I am very transparent on Twitter. Really went through a period of just not executing my strategy well, even though I was really seeing the market very well. And sometimes that just happens. I had a couple of good days and then a bad day and I said, you know what, I just need a mental break. I'm seeing things well, but it's not translating from mind to execution. I took a few days off and now it's been maybe a couple of weeks and I'm almost all the way back out of my drawdown. And it's amazing how much progress I made after taking that time off because I just refreshed myself. I just reset myself. So it's very important if you're doing well or not doing well, sometimes you just need a mental break to reset, to get back in the groove. Traders, do you take mental breaks from trading? Let me know down below with a yes or no in the comments. Never miss an episode of Develop Your Edge. Click that subscribe button right there. You can also DM me on Twitter at Anthony Crudelli. My DMs are open. Also check out Instagram and TikTok. Anthony C. Crudelli. Watch out for those fakes. See you next week.